Excel students, or evening since you're probably watching this the night before lab. Um, welcome to the lab. Here we have our water heater. We have our radiation chamber, aka a microwave, centrifuge, microscope, and the plate reader. Um, we wanted to stress how much the plate reader costs, so don't break it. Um, so here we have the hood. This is the incubator where we keep all of our cells. So today we're going to be splitting cells. So I always want to be wearing gloves. I always spray. No such thing as over spraying. And that's a 70% alcohol solution. Okay. So I will be splitting these A204 cells. So first thing we always want to do before and after we mess with cells is looking at them under the microscope. So this microscope is hooked up to the computer. And so here we have our A204 cells. So um, normal cell maintenance, you decide how much of the cells you want to take and put into a new flask. And so this one, we're going to take one eighth of the cells. So we're going to do a one to eight split and I'll explain that later. So we're going to turn on the hood. So these three switches, flip them all up. And very generously spray the inside. Again, no such thing as over spraying. Turn on the pipette aid. We're gonna loosen the lid of the PBS and take off the lid for the pasture pipettes. So everything gets sprayed before going into the hood except for things that have cells in it. Because there's a little vent up there and if I spray it with alcohol, the alcohol is gonna get in. Okay, so I need two things, my trypsin and the media for the cells which you have to heat up in the water bath because we want it all to be warm to not shock the cells. So, take it out of the bath. And each cell line has different media. You can see they're labeled on the front and make sure you have the correct cell line. So again, everything that doesn't have cells in it gets sprayed down before going in. Always spraying your hands if you touch anything outside of the hood. So, so our flask is in the hood. So um, when it lays in the incubator, it lays like this. So all the cells right now are adhered to the bottom or the back of the flask. So I want it facing me. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum off the medium. So I loosen it and I'm going to turn on the vacuum. And so it's very crucial when I'm handling the pipettes or anything else that's going to go into media or cells or anything that I only touch the very top of it to not contaminate the tip. So hold it like this, grab the end of the uh, vacuum tube, notice I'm only touching the tip of it. So from here, I can take off the lid. Hold it like that so I'm never setting the lid down to make contact with anything inside. And I want to put the tip here in the front corner because, as you remember, the cells are on the back side, so I always just want to touch the front side. I just tip it up, let it all run out. Okay, so from here, first thing I want to add is PBS. And PBS, all it does is just wash the serum off the front of, uh, off the top of the cells. So, loosen that, loosen that. And for a big flask, I'm going to add 10 mils of PBS. So, whenever I open these, I never want to open it out here. I always want to have it deep under the hood. And when I open it, I want to open it where the, um, the side that I insert is what I'm handling. And if I touch the end or anything down here, I just throw it away and start over because I don't want any contamination getting in. So here, 
just going to insert it. Sometimes you feel a little quick, sometimes you don't. And I pull it off, never touching the end. Just from here. Draw up 10. So up the top buttons to go up in the pipette, the bottom buttons to go down the pipette. So up is up. Get it up to 10. And I'm going to run the PBS down the front because I don't want to wash off any of the cells yet. From here I'm going to tighten up the lid. I'm just gently going to rinse back and forth, rinsing the cells off. A couple rocks back and forth, ready to vacuum off the PBS. The next thing I'm going to add is trypsin. So again, I'll loosen up my lids. Here I'm going to use a 5 mil pipette. Here you have 5s, 10s, and 125. So again, I open it with the side that goes into the pipette aid, never by the tip. So what also makes it easy, um, is here you have like the zero, one, two, three, four counting down. It makes it simpler if I have the side that counts up facing me. So a lot of times I'll turn it to where it's facing me and that just makes measuring a lot easier. So I'm gonna pull up three of trypsin. And notice if I drew too much, once I pull it out of the bottle, I'm never going to put it back in. Uh, just dump it out in a beaker or something. But once this leaves, I can't dip back in. Um, and if I have a pipette that I dipped in something else, I can never go into a different, uh, different container. So the trypsin, now what the trypsin is going to do is knock off the cells uh, and um, basically just let them loose from the back of the flask and so now I can run that down the back Tighten up my lid and put it in the incubator for a few minutes so Our cells have been sitting in the incubator under trypsin now for about five minutes so What the trypsin does Remember the beginning we said that the cells are all adhered to the bottom or the back of the flask. What the trypsin does is it breaks them loose. So, I'm going to look at them under the microscope to make sure that they did in fact all come loose. So, you see here that a lot of them are still stuck. Whenever I move it, some are floating, some aren't. So what you can do is just hold it firmly Notice I'm never tipping it toward the lid, but I'm holding it firmly and I'm just going to smack the back of it lightly. Notice it's never splashing up into the lid. I'm keeping it relatively still. For a little bit of that. Now they're all floating. Just make a note of how clumpy your cells are too. Okay. So now that I see that they're all not adhered to the back anymore, now I can split them. So, um, splitting, I'm going from that flask to a new flask. So the flasks are in here. These are the big flasks. Always make sure to reseal it. So anything that doesn't have cells in it at the moment gets sprayed if it's going in to the hood. So that's our new flask. So we said at the beginning of the video that we are going to split this flask one to eight. One to eight just means we're taking 
one eighth of the total amount of cells that's currently in this flask. So there's three mils of trypsin in there. And so if I add five mils of our media, then I'm gonna have eight mils total. So now that I have eight mils total, I can move one mil, which is an eighth of the total volume, into the new flask. And so that's how I get one eighth of all the cells from that flask into our new flask. So, currently three mils of trypsin in there. We're gonna add five of our media to bring it up to a total of eight mils in the flask. Again, I open up the pipette deep under the hood, not out here. I never touch the tip of it. If I touch down here, even if it's just a graze, throw it away, start over, we have plenty of pipettes. So making sure my lids are all loose. Notice this is the A204 media, which matches what cells I'm actually using. Bring it up to five. So I add five. So now I have a total of eight in the flask. So notice, Jesse said earlier, to note how clumpy the cells were under the microscope. So these were fairly clumpy. And so all I'm doing is I'm just going up and down. Um, and that's breaking apart those clumps, giving me uh, individual cells not adhered together. Um, one thing to really avoid is bringing it too far up into the cotton and into the the um, pipette aid. Really don't want that because Jesse's going to have to come in here and take it apart. All right, so I've been mixing this for a couple minutes now. Um, there's no such thing as too much mixing. Um, Jesse wanted me to say something about bubble prevention. So I never, once it's empty, I never want to keep on blowing out because that's going to make all... Uh, make all of it really bubbly and it's gonna make it hard to work with again I never draw so far in that I'm getting up to here with it so should all be mixed now no clumps so as I said before there's eight mils total in here and we're gonna take an eighth of that one eight split and so these uh, these flasks the big flasks hold 15 uh, or uh, hold 30 sorry hold 30 mills and so if I'm taking one of that into here I'm going ahead and just putting 29 of the media so that when I put in the cells it all totals up to 30 so for this I'm going to use a 25 mil pipette make sure my lids are loose and the 25 mil pipettes can actually go up to about 30 35 So here I'm at 29. Into the new flask. So I have 29 in there, and I'm just going to take one from here into there, and we'll be done. It's a five mil pipette. One mil of the cells. So I have an eighth of the cells from the original flask. And you want to try and put the tip into the media so you're not dropping them too far. There we go. And so, as I said before, anytime I work with cells immediately before and immediately after, I want to see how they look under the microscope. nice and healthy um, if I saw really big clumps I would go in and just mix it again like we did earlier 
and these should be good. So I'll just label my flask, put my name, the date, the cell line, um, and what we split it. So I would write one to eight. And the passage number. And the passage number. Um, passage number is just how many times it's been split or worked with. So since that originally said passage 10, let's write passage 11 on it and put it back in the incubator and it should be done.